I mean, there are a lot of factors that, that you could really do a deep dive into if you want to. But a lot of what it comes down to is frequencies between about 2 kilohertz and 7 kilohertz, which that's where a lot of uh, kind of like the bulk of human speech is. So the lower part of my voice, kind of the boomy part, right, that's that's closer to like 200, 300, kilo, uh, 200, 300 hertz. All the kind of eh, more nasal stuff where a lot of intelligibility is, that's up above around 2K. So if you're more sensitive to those upper mid frequencies, you're probably going to hear Yanny. If you're less sensitive or you're more sensitive to lower frequencies, you'll probably hear Laurel. It's just very, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it for you right now. Sure. Maybe it changes for you yeah, with your headphones right now. Yeah. But we're, we're going to play We're going to play this right now uh, for Ian and see what he, what he hears. Laurel. Laurel. So it's funny. Actually, the first time I kind of heard Yarrell <laughs> and then it turned into Laurel. So when I first heard it yesterday, I heard Yanny. Then I did some EQ moves in my studio. And it very qu- I found a spot where it's like even a, a pretty subtle change turned it right away into Laurel. And then there's this other thing that's I'm, there's so many things that I could discuss about this, but what, <laughs> one of one of them is something called the cocktail party effect, right? And it's, it basically gets at the fact that like if you're maybe you're in a bar, maybe you're at a party, right? Crowded room, a lot of noise going on, you can hear your name. You know, someone says your name across the room, you can just like latch into it. Um, so beyond what your ears do you know, and turning acoustic energy from the world into sound, your brain does a ton of processing in the background and in filtering out extraneous noise and kind of allowing you to focus in on things. So once you hear Laurel and you cue into those lower frequencies that kind of make the sound in Laurel, it's very hard to ignore them. Your brain knows they're there and it kind of every time it'll just go back to those. So that's for a lot of people. If you hear maybe Yanny at first, and then you hear some, you listen to it somewhere else or on a dis- different system, you hear Laurel. It can be harder to get back to hearing Yanny, um, or it turns into some Yarrell weird combination in between. It was funny because you know we talk about people hearing one thing, then hearing the other. We had Mike, who you just met. Uh, he was on a little bit earlier, and he said it, it was Yanny or Yanny every single time. And yeah. then he put the headphones on, and I played it, and he heard Laurel for the first time. You know, because they say it back to back. Right. You heard Laurel the first time. Then you heard Yanni the second time. It went right back. Like, that's so bizarre it's, to me. It's very, it's very strange. And it, it, I mean, it really speaks to really two things. One is the, the difference in hearing profile. So, and there are a lot of things that contribute to that. Um, age is definitely a factor, right? As you get older, your, your hearing decreases, right? You, that's old people. Are, hey, what'd you say? Right. So you can't, it gets harder to hear, especially upper higher frequencies. So that's a part of it. Um, Gender is actually a part of it too. There've been a lot of studies that show that over about the age of 30, men tend to be less sensitive to upper mid frequencies than women. Um, Occupation, you know, if you're operating a jackhammer every day, your hearing's probably going to be damaged. Right. My dad's a pilot. He spends, you know, in little prop planes, he spends, I don't know, six, eight hours a day flying in a really noisy environment. I got to speak up when I talk to him now. Um, so there are all these factors that that contribute to what your own individual hearing profile is. But but then, I mean, the, the wild part of this is the psychological element. So right. there's this there's this whole field of study called psychoacoustics, which looks at the link between uh, the acoustics, the right, the sound, the actual sound waves in the air and the psychological part of it, which is how does your brain interpret this stuff? Um it's, it's really amazing at, at how much your brain can either ignore if it's not relevant to, to what you're trying to focus on or pick up on if you are trying to focus on something. So I, I think that yet those those are kind of the fundamental elements that are that are really going into why people are hearing different things or why the same person can hear different things at different times. I don't know if you can even answer this question, but you work in this field and sure. you seem to be into psychology and things like that. So someone actually sent me a message yesterday and said that if it's Yanni, it means you're more intelligent than someone who said Laurel. <laughs> like, and they were dead serious though. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, get the heck out of here. You're, you're kidding. He goes, no, that's like, that's legit. Like, is there any, is there any truth to any of those things that, I, that you're aware of? I, not, not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, like I said, it's really, it's really predominantly going to come down to this hearing profile thing. That's, that's the biggest part of it. Um, you ever had a, like a hearing test done when you were a kid or something, yeah. right? And you sit in the booth and they put the headphones on and say, when you hear the tone, put your hand up or whatever, play all these different pitches that, that 
determine, you know, the, the reason they did that is to make sure that you can hear all, all these different frequencies across the frequency range accurately and kind of within normal range. But if, if you actually plot that and look at it on a graph, everyone's is a little different. And that's just, I, I mean, you come out born that way, everyone is a little different. And then as you go through life, it's going to change even more, you know, depending on all these different factors. So I really, I think that's the biggest part of it. And, and then, you know, there's this a phenomenon called masking, um, which is like, you know, if, if you're watching TV in the summer, maybe you got the window AC on, the TV's kind of at a normal volume level, you can understand the dialogue just fine. All of a sudden the AC kicks on, you can't, you can still hear that people are talking, but you can't really understand what they're saying anymore. You got to turn it up a little bit. That's a phenomenon called masking. Um, and basically that's just where one sound can kind of obscure or mask a slightly quieter sound at a, a different frequency range. So I think that's part of what's going on. So if you're more sensitive to the higher frequencies, the eh, yanny, right, part of it, if, if it's you start out, you're more sensitive to that, and there's some masking going on, the yanny is going to kind of mask from the little part of it, uh, the lower part that kind of turns it into laurel. Um, I don't I don't know that you could draw any conclusions about intelligence, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what... I guess if we're doing like a research paper here, you, sure. always, you always start with like the hypothesis and then you end with the conclusion. What is your right. conclusion here with this whole thing? Uh, wow. I mean, I think I would I would want to see some data before I could to really draw a conclusion. And I, I would love to. I would love to turn this into a study and and look at, you know, how does how does how does what people here relate to their age, their gender, their occupation, their background, all these different things. Um, I mean, there, there are differences in, in how people perceive masking or can, or how, uh, the, the cocktail party effect that I talked about before, how, how attuned to that they are. And it, it is something that can be trained. I mean, as a mastering engineer, that's one of the things that I kind of do a lot is, is work on my ability to hear very specific things so that I can be listening to a whole song, but listen to just, you know, just the ride symbol on the drum set and say, hmm, you know, is there some little thing that I can do to make that sit better? But then also be able to pull back and listen to the, the whole thing as just one cohesive whole. So there's certain, certainly a training element to it that, that if it's, it's like any other thing. If you practice, you can learn to hear things in a more detailed way. So I, I don't know if there's a conclusion I can draw off the bat other than we're all different. Yeah, and, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Like... I've heard Laurel every single time. Is there a way that I could process actually hearing Yanni at this point? Is it, it possible it, for me to hear it? I would say it might be. It's probably, I think it's probably tougher to go from hearing Laurel to hearing Yanni than the other way around. Um, if you hear Yanni to begin with, you can either boost the low frequencies or cut some of the high frequencies. And that's, that's what I did in my studio. And it was just very clear all of a sudden, night and day. If you're hearing Laurel, I think what I would try doing is is boosting the high frequency so boosting maybe like two to six or seven kilohertz and maybe cutting some of the low end and focusing more on on that area and and if you make those kind of eq eq moves it's possible that it's going to start to sound more like yanny or yari to you since you've heard laurel and again your brain is now cued in that there are these lower frequencies that were maybe getting masked before well for me they were anyway. for you they're clearly not <laughs> we're locked in on laurel right um, it's, it's going to really retain those unless maybe you go away for six months and kind of totally forget about it and then come back to it and listen to a process version that's kind of maybe tailored to, to your hearing response. I wonder what this will be like in six months if I still yeah, hear Laurel follow, follow without, up. without listening to it. <laughs> uh, final question before I let you go, sure. and I appreciate you coming in and explaining yeah. this a little bit more. When I first saw, I don't know if you've seen this on Facebook or anything, have you ever seen the show Zach Morris's Trash? No. Oh, my God. Are you, did you watch Save by the Bell as a kid? No. Okay. can't say I did. So for those who don't know, um, Save by the Bell was like one of my favorite shows. And what this guy does is he breaks down in like four or five minutes an episode of Save by the Bell and talks about how terrible the human being <laughs> Zach Morris is. And it's hilarious and it all makes sense. And it was one of those things that after I watched the first episode, I'm like, man, the fact that I didn't think of this just annoys me to death. That I don't, that I didn't think of this wonderful idea. When you saw this being in the field that you're in, is there a part of you that's like, man, I should have thought of something like this? I'd be going viral right now. Yeah, partially, and, and there's definitely a part of me that looks at this, and and I would love to know some of the history behind this clip. Like, is this an intentional thing that someone did? How did they process it? You know, 
to get it at this place where it's right on this cusp of, for some people it's Laurel and other people it's Yanny. It's, it, it's kind of a precise thing. Um, so yeah, definitely a, a lot of respect for, the, for whoever put this together or if it was an accident, what a cool accident, you know? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, local musician Michael Fabrizio has chimed in. Uh, he'll be performing at the Colonial on Friday and said, this Ian guy is amazing. Oh, thanks, Michael. So we're, we're all uh, we're all learning something today. <laughs> Excellent. This is just a fascinating thing. And it's amazing because I hated this thing yesterday morning at like 7 a.m. <laughs> I was not into it at all. And then by 9 a.m., I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I was telling my wife about it. She was like, eh. I don't know why you're so fascinated by this. I played it for her and she heard something totally different. I'm like, that's why I'm so fascinated by it. Because everyone keeps hearing different things at different times. I've heard the same thing every single time. Some people have heard, you know, half Laurel, half Yanni. Right. Some people are just hearing Yanni and some people hear one thing one time and the rest the other. It's right. It's so it's, crazy. To it me. really is wild. And uh, yeah, like I like I said, I think the, the most fascinating part is the psychological element. And and just it, it really does speak to how much our brains do to what comes in our ears. I love this so much. Maybe I should just take a break from it and just go back in six months and see how it. I, th- uh, I think it would be cool. To, yeah. Six months, a, a year. Give, give it some time. Set a reminder somewhere. And, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's just going to be hard for me to not to like bring this up again. For six right. months. I'm gonna do the best <laughs> I can. But Ian, thank you very much, man. My pleasure. Uh, this is good stuff. Yeah. Thanks for having and me I'm on. Glad, I'm glad you reached out and we're able to make this happen. Likewise.